Engine blueprinting, what does that mean? One thing it means is you'll pay more for it, but why? This is part one of a two-part series, and I'll explain to you the difference between a production engine and a handcrafted blueprinted one, so stick with us. Before we get started, I'd like to say thanks to our newest channel members and thanks to all of you that have called to order parts from us and support efforts to provide content like this through your likes and your shares and subscriptions to the channel. I appreciate it very much. So blueprinting an engine is not too different than building a house based on a blueprint. You've got a set of plans you must adhere to so that all the components in the build process fit together like they're expected to. So just like houses with an engine, you can buy production built ones or you can buy kits or you can have one custom built. There's no question that a spec home that has no particular buyer in mind will be less expensive than a complete custom built home for a specific buyer. And a home built by a volume builder will be less expensive and most likely not to the quality standard that a custom home builder would build. Engines are exactly the same. So our engine services follow in a very similar fashion. A person can buy a major brand assembled crate engine from us, like uh, one from SNS, or a high production manufactured engine from Harley, or since we do everything in house, they can purchase engine kits from us and do the build themselves. Or we can build a great reliable engine for someone that's more of a spec build, or we can build one of our custom tailored Skunk Works full blueprinted engines. Each have their place, and that's mostly determined by the buyer's intended use and budget. So let's start with our complete custom Skunk Works blueprinted engine process to kind of best explain what blueprinting is. So first, we're gonna start with a consultation with a customer to find out exactly how the bike will be used and his, ex his expectations for power output. We wanna know how the customer rides, where they ride, fuel octane availability, their weight. Do they pull a trailer? Do they have a sidecar? And do they carry a passenger? Uh, from there, I designed the engine actually from the top down. Uh, the first step would be to choose a compression ratio. That's determined by things like the volume of the combustion chamber in the head, which is this here, the thickness of the head gasket, which goes between here and the cylinder, uh, and the distance from the piston to the head, as well as the volume of the cylinder, which is also determined by the engine's size, the bore of the cylinder, the stroke of the crank, etc. All that fun stuff. So this is where blueprinting really comes in. Now, most often we're working with stock core components like this engine case, head, and cylinder. Uh, each of those components are manufactured to meet a certain tolerance and range of measure through their production process. So one tolerance would be like the distance between the center line of the crank to the top of the engine case, here to here. The next would be the center line of the crank to the top of the connecting rod then the center of the crank pin on the rod to the top of the piston. Then you have to factor in the height of the cylinder, the thickness of the head gasket, and all of those combined tolerances are called stack tolerances. Each of these components are manufactured to a desired measurement, plus or minus a few thousandths of an inch. When you combine all of them together, the final dimensions can vary substantially. This is a key element in the difference between production built components and precision machined ones. Precision machined components are made with much tighter tolerances and it makes it easier to adhere to an original blueprint and are typically made with better materials so they retain their size and their shape through the entire lifespan. So basically, we're working to maintain clearances down to a tenth of a thousandth of an inch over several inches of different components stacked together. The case, the cylinder, the head, the piston, the crank, the rods. So when we blueprint an engine, each component in the process is measured and assembled on a trial basis. Then each individual component is machined so that the final measurement is exact and precise to the original blueprint. 
the bigger an engine gets, the more power it makes and the more reliable you want it to be makes this level of precision even more important. So keep in mind that a piston is only about 30 to 40 thousandths of an inch away from the cylinder head. That's about the thickness of a piece of construction paper. And that piston can be moving in excess of 4,000 feet per minute, experiencing thermal expansion, incredible combustion pressures, more than 1,500 violent explosions per minute. I mean, a combustion chamber is literally hell on earth, and there's a lot going on in there. And when you're pushing these engines to the ragged edge of performance, and the longer you want them to last, each of these tolerances matter. Now in this episode, we've only touched on the lower end of the engine. We haven't even gotten into piston to cylinder fits and lifter to bore clearances and valve to valve clearances and all of these other factors. But I, I hope this gives you a much better perspective as to why there is such a broad price range when it comes to building or buying performance engines. To fully blueprint an engine and to build it like a custom tailored suit, that's very specific to the buyer is more expensive. But you get something that's built just for you and how you intend to use it. It's a lot of painstaking work that requires very specialized, very expensive tools and equipment and years of experience to do it successfully. And that's why you pay more for it. So in episode number two, we will discuss the top end, heads, cams, and push rods, and rocker arms, and all of those other things because they're as equally as important to the blueprint process as the lower end. But thanks for watching guys. Please take a second to hit subscribe and the little bell so that you'll get notified when we post the second episode on how uh, blueprinted engines go together. Hope you take care of yourselves and each other. Have a good one.